Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're gonna to talk about what is the base knowledge you need to be a quant. I get this all the time, people wanna know, hey, what, what do I need to know, how do I become a quant? Um, again, this is a disclaimer on the fact that becoming a quant isn't something you reach, at least not in my opinion, uh, it is something that you are constantly doing. Being a quant is kind of a process, like you're continually becoming a quant. It's not something you ever actually become and finish being. That being said, I've put off making this video for a long time. Uh, the reason is, is that there is no such thing as kind of a base knowledge. It's more or less someone's opinion on the foundation of what you need to be a quant. Um, again, you can look at financial engineering programs, you can look at data science programs, you can look at statistics master's programs, and in general, a lot of them have very different curriculums. Um, even like financial engineering, for example, which I like to consider more or less a pure quant kind of studies, um, each program has very different, unique aspects. Some programs focus more on mathematics, some focus more on computer science, but let's dive on in and tell you what I... So the first area is math and statistics, which is definitely important for being a quant. Um, it's kind of the core of being a quant, and I kind of group these together because I view them as kind of one area or one topic. However, uh, they are very different. The second main area that you need is computer science. So knowing mathematics and statistics or even financial theory uh, is great, but if you can't implement this into a computer program, into a language, something that can be used over and over repetitively um, and actually used in practice, it's not of any use to anybody. So computer programming and computer science uh, is the second main area. And then the third main area, in my opinion, is uh, finance. So most of you that are wanting to be a quant want to work in quantitative finance. However, if you want to go out and work in some other area, um, you might want to learn more about that area. So if you want to do marketing, uh, you could learn more about marketing in greater detail. Uh, but again, I, I don't know if I'd really call you a quant. You're more of a data scientist, not a quant. Uh, quants typically uh, are finance related, so quantitative finance. So let's dive on in here on the first one, statistics. Statistics is probably the heart and soul, in my opinion, of being a quant. Um, I guess this goes in hand with the math part, like I said. Uh, the reason is, is that this is more or less all of your theory, uh, all of your actual applications and everything are going to be put into math and statistical formulas, um, and then you're gonna create models or I guess equations to come up with solutions to problems. So just to start off with in this, you can see it's a long list of stuff. It does not cover everything like I've mentioned, but these are the general areas I would recommend. Uh, the first one is regression. So knowing OLS, knowing uh, logistic regression, uh, also knowing like generalized linear models. Um, there's a whole bunch, like a big, big area in regression analysis and regression in general. However, those are kind of the basics. You should at minimum know OLS and logistic and different variations of the two. Uh, and then that leads into time series analysis. Yes, time series is more or less a type of regression, but time series is very specific to finance. Um, it can be used all over anything in general, but finance loves to use time series due to the application of financial asset pricing over time, as well as volatility over time, uh, and just plotting different things over time in general. The last three is non-parametric, data cleaning and processing, and data exploration. All three of these are very, very crucial. You need to know how to clean data, how to get it into the right format that you need it in. Uh, make sure you're not modeling, I guess, more or less something with garbage inputs because you're gonna get garbage outputs. And then data exploration. So knowing what your data is, how is it being used? Is it appropriate? Um, using the basically the core of the data, understanding how it's put together and coming up with a theory. And this leads us more or less to the non-parametric regression or non-parametric approaches. Um, I actually love kernels. We use them a lot in grad school. I don't use them a lot in practice for risk management right now. However, I have seen them used in operational risk. Uh, they more or less estimate distributions, but they're not standardized distributions. Uh, they're non-parametric. So these are also great tools and things you'll use all across uh, quantitative finance. And then the math section, yes, I have a separate slide for it. Um, it's big, it's something that you need to know inside and out. The reason you need to know mathematics is you need to be able to prove to somebody that something works. Saying like, oh, this is industry best practice, which I get a lot, is not actual proof. The actual mathematics is proof, it's logic. Um, 
It has theory behind it, so it can be flawed. However, it's a lot more accurate to prove something with math. So just in general for mathematics, a quick overview, you need calculus and not just like, oh, I've taken a calc class. You need to take like two, three calculus classes. You need linear algebra. Um, this is just like the core basics. Then you need to be able to understand and work with ordinary differential equations and partial differential equations, which are the ODEs and PDEs. Optimization is huge. So I didn't list it in here, but economics is a big, big area of quantitative finance. A lot of the theories get applied to quantitative finance and optimization is a big part of economics and finance in general. However, Taylor series approximations are useful to know, as well as Markov processes and other different formulas and different ways to find the minimum and maximum globally and locally of different functions. And then stochastic calculus is probably the biggest uh, for quantitative finance. It's very unique, it's very different. Uh, in my personal opinion, it is a huge pain in the backside to learn, but it is very useful and has a lot of applications in quantitative finance. So as you can see here, I listed out a few different topics within stochastic calculus that apply to finance. Ito's lemma being one of them, uh, understanding the basics of Martingale's Brownian motion, the Feynman CAC, stochastic differential equations, and stochastic integrals. All very important things in stochastic finance, especially in derivative asset pricing. And of course, the last one is binomial asset pricing. Something that's very useful, something you use a lot of, and something that you need to understand inside and out. So the second main area is computer science. I'm gonna run through this real quickly here, but more or less, you need to know a statistics language. You need to know a more or less programming language. You'll see that Python is great because it can be used for both. Um, but again, a lot of companies don't use Python. So it is definitely useful to know R, for example, because R is free and open source. Uh, knowing MATLAB and SAS are great. SAS is used in banking. However, uh, it's really expensive to get and it's hard to actually practice and learn if you don't have the money to buy SAS. So the second part of knowing computer science is not for the fact of like being able to make cool like little programs. Um, yeah, that's cool. That's the tech world and that's fine and dandy. But in reality, we need to be able to take the mathematics, statistics and financial theory and apply them into something that we can use as a tool in our daily jobs. And so that is going to be the computer science portion of it. So you need to be able to program statistics and math and finance theory. So machine learning is big now, it's taking off. Like I said, I, mean, I mentioned a bunch of different theories in here. Random forest and neural networks is big right now, gradient boosting as well. Um, these are all things that you need, uh, things that are new, things that aren't really done too much in a lot of different areas, but they're taking off. So knowing this will give you a competitive edge. And then more or less the third bullet in this slide is kind of like a list of just topics in computer science. I find way too many financial engineers and risk management professionals and other quants that end up going out there and learning how to program just minimally, like a little bit, and their programming practices are horrible. So this third bullet is stuff that you should just know in general. Um, the last one being more or less the best practices for writing programming code. So don't make a messy program and expect people to dig through it and figure it out, especially for someone like myself who works in model validation and has to look at your work and judge if it's done correctly. And then the last part is finance. And knowing finance is crucial. Um, I see a lot of quants that have the math, statistics, and computer science, but they don't really understand the financial theory. Uh, finance is big, you need to know what you're modeling. So time value of money is huge. Uh, fixed income, equity and derivatives are most of the three different types of assets and general categories that you need in finance. That being said, for example, in fixed income, you need to know duration, you need to know how to model curves. Looking at convexity of curves for interest rates, for example, is very important. For derivatives, I don't mean like the general theory, like, oh, this is a call option, you know, and this is what it is. No, you need to know the mathematics and the statistics which we talked about but you need to know how the functions work. You need to know how these derivatives are used in practice and how financial practitioners are implementing these more or less to hedge risk, um, to take speculative bets. You need to know more or less what they're doing with these instruments and how they actually use them in practice. And then that leads us more or less to like different areas of quantitative finance. So maybe you're gonna work on a asset management company. Uh, you need to know portfolio optimization. There are a variety of different areas that you can learn, that you can do, equations and theories. So on top of this, you need to know arbitrage theory. You need to know all the theories in finance behind these models and why you're implementing them, uh, why these models are more or less wrong in practice, and how do you modify those financial equations to make them more in alignment with reality without making them too complex. And of course, the final one in finance is risk management. This is a broad, broad area. And as you can see in everything more or less in these slides, everything ties together. You have to know all of it together to make it work. Uh, risk management is no exception. Of course, most finance people think VAR, value at risk, like that's risk management. 
Now it's, <laughs> that's only a small, small sliver, guys. It's not really risk management. It's just one tool we use. So you'll see here, I list out statistics again because statistical modeling is big. Learning the financial theory behind it's big and then learning how to apply that into a risk kind of framework, uh, calculating uh, capital losses, capital on books, different things that you need to know and different things that are required by regulatory purposes are all things that are helpful to know that aren't necessarily math or statistics, but you'll have to be able to apply your math and statistics to them. And that's basically it, guys. That's more or less the base knowledge of being a quant. Like I said, this is a personal opinion, so please don't jump all over me in the comments on, Dimitri, I'm a financial engineer and I think you should know these 30 things. Um, like I said, this list is not everything. This is just a starting point. Um, and I just want to point out too, I don't know all of this. I'm not an expert on all the base knowledge, especially when you get into industry and practice, you become very good at one area and one topic. And so you have to kind of push yourself to learn different areas that you might not be using in practice. And so I do this quite a bit. I'm always self-learning and self-teaching because I want to keep up with the industry. I want to keep myself marketable and be able to move around if possible. So those are more or less the base knowledge of my opinion for being a quant. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, until next time. Thanks for watching my video. If you find it helpful, please like, share, and subscribe.